Hey guys, welcome back to the Oddity Shop. I'm Kara, and this is my beautiful co-host Zach. Say hi. Hello. Zach. Okay, <laughs> so we've switched places because for the last like four weeks, you have sounded sicker than a dog, and now I've got the something. measly fever. I got something going. You don't have the vid though. No, no, just I think maybe like a lack of sleep fever. Probably. Problem. why why because Where'd i've been running go? around like a crazy person oh i did go to a blink 182 concert though yeah you idiot <laughs> top 10 shows i've ever seen in my whole life oh my god it was amazing although and i know i told you this earlier but there is just something i can't unsee from that oh yeah and i'm actually i i forgot you told me this and now you're gonna bring it up again and i'm mad so go ahead, ruin everybody else. I'm going to ruin it for everybody else. I love Blink-182. I love Tom DeLonge. But if you switched him with Zach Baggins from Ghost Adventures, I don't think I would know the difference. Now, though. Not now, like, yeah. yeah. Not years ago, but the way he looks now. Ooh. Okay, but that's our side note. Uh, by the way, this is the Oddity Shop podcast where we tell you creepy stories and things that may or may not give you chills or cre- keep, keep you up at night. Almost said creep you up at night. Either that way, too. I guess. That too, that works. Right? Yeah, so you're going first, but I have a couple things to shout out, talk about real quick. Let's get it going. Okay, so first off, let's shout out Denise. Thanks, Denise, for getting our hotel tickets and our... What else did she get for us? Hotel tickets? One ticket to the hotel, please. <laughs> she got... She well, pre-purchased. They, well, it's like a, it's, it's not a ticket. I was gonna be like, no, it's like a ticket. Well, kind she of. She pre-purchased our hotel rooms and yes. a um psychic gallery for us at Paracon. Which don't worry, we will pay you back. Mother. Oh yeah, I was just thanking her for being on top of her game and making sure that because a lot of shit was sold out by the time we actually bought our general admission tickets or whatever. Right. I'm so ready though. I'm so excited. Good looking out. Um, that was my other thing is that we we're going to Paracon. So who's going to be there? Yes, if you're going, we want to know. Come say hi. We want to hang out. But don't don't like come up and touch me. Ask me first. <laughs> I don't want somebody to just like run up to me and like you know people just like. <laughs> <laughs> do do you just run up and touch people? I no. feel like people would say hello before no. they. Some people are like real excited and like you know like when they're like oh my god and they like grab your shoulder or, like. You can run up and touch me. It's fine. Touch Zach, not me. <laughs> I'll give you a hug after, though. Just don't just run up and touch me. What else do you got? Really quick, I think that we have not, seriously have not done a good job of um, letting you guys know this. And I don't want people to think that we don't have show notes and that we don't put our references somewhere. So we are very bad, and that's something that like I'm kind of surprised on us because we had talked about it, that we wanted to be really upfront on where we get all of our information. So instead of us listing it to you guys at the top of each episode, because I think that kind of gets a little annoying, we put everything in the description of the show notes. So if you do have any other like questions or like you want to just know where we got our information or you want to like deep dive a little bit more, we do link all of our stuff in the show notes. Absolutely. It's always there. So check it. And if you want to fact check us, also fact check the authors of those articles. Yes, there you go. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to bring that because I don't think we've done a good job of each episode just reminding you guys. Um, and that's all my stuff, I think. Perfect. Do you have a question for me? I do have a question for you. Okay. Well, what the hell is wrong with you? I'm kidding. No, <sighs> the real question. <laughs> you guys can't see her face right now, but she just looks so disappointed. No, I'm annoyed. <laughs> <laughs> have you ever had to give up a product that you love because you found out it might actually be really dangerous for you. For example, I had to give up one of my old shampoos because I found out it was actually leading to more of my hair loss. Um, yeah, well, the only thing I can think of off the top of my brain is I've given up a lot of different like influencer brands because they've done something that I don't agree with. And I've happened to love a lot of those products, but I did stop using them. Ooh, that's kind of an interesting take on the question, but I do like it. So, you know, James Charles, go fuck yourself. Anyway. Truly. Um, okay. You ready to get into it then? Yeah. So I was going to tell you the story of the Radium Girls. Okay. I started researching this story. And I went down a rabbit hole that led me to some crazy things that I think I would rather talk about more. Okay, because I I do know about the Radium Girls, so this is exciting. And 
I hate like as I was researching, I'm like, I feel like so many people have covered this. So I'm still going to do a brief overview. Just I'll say to, like, it's still very interesting. Super interesting. Um, if I'm you sad. do want more of a deep dive into the story, I'm going to go like briefly into episode 190 of my favorite murder called Lick the Clock. Mm-hmm. Um, they do a great job covering it. And so does Bailey Sarian on her podcast, Dark History. Yeah, she does. Uh, she's got the episode titled Women Were Poisoned by Their Job for Years. So check those out. Those are both great resources. Like I said, we're going to go through like really short version of it. And then we're going kind of a different direction. So are you ready? Yes, I am. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Ew. Okay. In the early 1900s, uh, there was a company that started manufacturing clocks. And manufacturing? Watches. Listen, everything's going to sound really bad. I've got like a terrible stuffy nose. Manufacturing. Manufacturing clocks <laughs> and watches that glowed in the dark. Is it glowed? Well, it's not glue in the dark. Glow. Right? Wait. No, glow. Like well, glow? Glow in the dark. Stars. Glow in the dark. Okay. Glow in the dark. Clocks and watches that do glow in the dark. Yeah. Um, to help people see at night, especially soldiers during the war. So the company starts hiring like crazy. It's all women. Like I said, the war is going on. Most of the men are at war, mostly in Illinois, but they were in a couple other states as well. So women were jumping at the job because for all intents and purposes, it was like it was pretty easy as far as factory jobs go. Um, and it was one of the most well-paying jobs uneducated people could get at this time. Hmm. All they had to do was come into work. They would paint the glow in the dark paint onto watch faces, like so the numbers, right? So they would glow. So the undark, which was the name of the paint color, undark, glowed because they added a special chemical to it. That chemical, by the admission of the company, was supposed to be completely safe. It was called radium. <laughs> so what the factory workers would do is they would dip their brush in water, mm -hmm. then into a powder to make the paint. So that powder contained radium, among other chemicals, and then they would get to work on the clock faces. Mm -hmm. However, their brushes would lose the tip after a while, so they were instructed to repoint the brushes by putting them in their lips and pulling the brush to get a fine point back again. Which anybody that's done like nail art or any sort of painting knows exactly what, like you can envision that. Right. Not only were they basically putting this paint in their mouth, the paint was a powder thing. So it was getting all over the factory studios. Oh, my God. I thought you were going to throw up. <sighs> no, I just muted while I coughed. Um, not only was it all over the studios, though, but like the women would eat in the rooms. Right. So like they were just constantly. around. Yeah, because the they didn't have like a separate station or area or a lunchroom. Like, hell no. But the company told them that all of this was completely safe. Mm. Except the girls started to notice that some things weren't quite right. The first signs were breaking out in tons of acne, pain in their mouths, sores around their gums, and other cuts that just didn't seem to heal as well as toothaches. A couple of them started to go to the doctor. And of course, they were told the typical things for the early 1900s, like, your hormones are going crazy. Oh or of course... You just have syphilis. <laughs> because Hormones, syphilis. Why not? Now, there was one doctor who was like, wow, this really sounds like phosphorus poisoning. Mm. So they tested the chemicals. They found no phosphorus and they ruled that out. So back to the STDs, it must be. Oh my God. Now, there's a group of like five women from the Illinois factory who were just absolute badasses who would not let this go. Right. Mm -hmm. So and with the help of one of the doctors and their relentless passion to figure out what was going on. They determined they were actually being poisoned by the radium. Um, didn't her sister die? Yep. Okay, well, and that's kind of why she went. That's, oh, sorry. No, and I'm not going to get into the, so that that group of women. They're amazing. They I, are, but wasn't that what kind of what it was like? The sister. Died I, they were already other? starting to get sick, but once okay. one of them died, that's when they really started yep. fighting. So I, I didn't get into them or their names or anything. Like I said, those two other episodes are going to do a much better job. Oh, just yeah. want to give everyone the overview. Uh, but the sad part is, is that their ailments just got worse uh, to body pains, teeth falling out, sores in their mouths and throats that would never go Horrifying. Away. Horrifying. They were like eaten from the inside out. Um, and unfortunately, eventually, most of the women who worked at that factory did die. 
While all this is happening, though, the company just keeps pushing that radium is completely safe and the public shouldn't be worried and the uh, women shouldn't be worried. They should just keep working. And they still just keep saying, you know, it's it's syphilis or hormones or anything that basically wasn't right. their fault. And unfortunately, at that time, you really needed the job. So you just didn't have a choice and to quit. Uh, and it was so well paying, you know. Um, so now, unfortunately, though, when radium goes into your body, your body actually treats it like calcium, mm. which means it gets deposited into your bones. Yeah. And, and once it starts accumulating, it doesn't go away. So once it's in your bones, it's not like your body starts to filter it out. Interesting. Like I said, plenty of the women were dying and those who weren't dead yet realized there was no cure. Instead, they fought that company to their death to make sure they saved other women and warned the public. The, the women do eventually win in court. It was settled, uh, which led way to the public realizing the safety hazards of radium um, and plenty of other legislation that provided a lot of support for workers' rights. That is the super, super brief overview of the radium girls. W while I was researching this, though, I went down this insane rabbit hole. Do you realize how much shit had radium in it in the early 1900s yeah i mean no but yes it's really wild but that's like a lot of shit like teflon that we still use today oh yeah well oh don't worry we're gonna touch on today's stuff too um but i had never like heard of half of these products before all of these things like i said they're they're based on being public for or being ugh, not public being healthy for public consumption we're going to get into some of those products but i want to give you a brief history on Wait, radium. You said consumption consumption okay i just wanted to make oh. sure okay i'm i'm dead oh yeah uh -huh. no it's like uh-huh great i always thought it was crazy that like the radium girls would put the brush to their mouth and like not think twice about this chemical but it gets okay so much worse all right i'm excited because i don't know any of this so radium was actually discovered by the famous chemist marie curie which is just like one of the best names yeah I that's think, good of all time um, so that was December 1898. I mean, and she's super famous uh, for a ton of different compounds and the like discovery of them. Right. You're looking at me. You've never heard of her. No. Why would I ever heard of her? Because she is like super duper famous. OK. There's a lot of famous people I've never heard of. Did you ever watch Sabrina the Teenage Witch? Yes. Do you remember the French woman that the ants brought back to teach Sabrina about chemistry? Oh, yeah, maybe that's why the name sounded vaguely familiar. That's Marie Curie. That's what I always think of for some reason. You're, okay. Yep. <laughs> Sabrina. Leave it to okay. Sabrina. <laughs> See, I knew if I just put it in the right context Thank you. for you. <laughs> so anyways, she discovers it in 1898. Um, it's a radioactive metal. And while it's decaying, as radioactive elements do, it emits ionizing radiation which can cause radioluminescence or the green glow that was used in the paints. Mm -hmm. That's about it on the chemistry. I don't understand anything past that. I hardly understood half of what I just said. What we do know, though, is once it was discovered, it became outrageously expensive. In 1900, one gram of it could cost up to $100,000. Mm. What is that in today's money? A lot. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. But a, lot? It's a lot? It's a lot of money. Okay. I hate you. Basically, it was after its discovery, all these companies jumped on it and put it in ton tons and tons of household items. Now, they knew it was radioactive, but nobody knew the dangers of radioactivity at this point. Okay. So they knew that radioactive items decayed and gave off a lot of energy. And they're like, well, that must be a great thing. <laughs> I mean, I guess if you didn't know, that might be what you'd think. I don't know. Right. So they believed it was going to be like a curative product based only on the fact that Marie Curie proved that radium was beneficial at destroying cancer cells. I mean, I could really see that, though. Logical jump. However, it turned out it would really destroy any tissue it came right, into contact right, right, with right. and then keep those tissues from regenerating, which would explain why the radium girls would get sores in their mouths that would just never heal. <sighs> Marie Curie herself actually dies from prolonged exposure to radium at the age of 66 in 1934. That tracks. However, before that happened and we discovered the no terrible side effects, not even side effects, the terrible direct effects. Right. It could be used to cure and help with the following ailments and diseases. This is insane. <laughs> Cancer, which is true and still used for today. Yeah. Diabetes. 
sciatica, rheumatism, mm. impotence, blindness, impotence. <laughs> of course, hysteria in women, because what drug didn't at this time? Oh, God. And so, so much more. Okay, so because of this, from 1898 to like 1935, 1940, people started putting radium in fucking everything so they're just thinking that like you said this is the cure-all so just add it wherever the hell you can oh yes okay. and they did <laughs> not only just a cure-all it could do so much more than just cure these diseases so here are products that contained radium in the early 1900s oh my god water <laughs> radium was added to water Ew. by placing the water in radium laced buckets which you could just buy and have in your house so you could keep refilling your, your radium you water as you wanted. What do you think that tasted like? It was really, like, really small amounts. So the lethal levels of radium are insanely low and they build up over time. Mm -hmm. It's also $100,000 a gram. Right. So it's like tiny, tiny amounts. So you probably don't even really taste it? Right. Okay. This water, when you drink it, it would help with arthritis impotence. It would help with wrinkles. Mm. There was a very popular brand called Radathor, which was marketed like an energy drink. Oh, my God. Funny enough, it was advertised as the cure for the living dead. Oh, my God. Oh, my. That was until the people who drank its jaws fell off and they actually did look like zombies. Oh, my God. Because it, would, it yeah. starts to get between your gums and your teeth. Oh my gets God. deposited into all the bones, starts to make lesion. Oh, yeah. I mean, people's jaws were literally yeah. coming off. It was also used in toys. Oh, no. For the glowing aspect? For the glowing aspect, right? Which that one's not too surprising. Mm -mm. My favorite toy that I came across oh, was the Atomic Energy Lab Kit for Kids. Oh, no. <laughs> where you could perform over 150 different experiments with radioactive compounds. What the fuck? <laughs> not surprising. This was only on the market for two years and it did not sell oh, well. Oh, my God. It's like beakers and test tubes for kids. <laughs> Your kids. Which is like okay today if you're going to do it with like baking soda and vinegar. Well, and yeah. Water, What's not here's a tube of radium. Have fun. <laughs> oh, no. How about toothpaste? <laughs> Why not? How it is the way to make your smile glow. <gasps> oh. Not only that, but heal your gums, make your teeth strong, and fight any infection even though it's literally doing the complete opposite of all of that oh yeah so there was a german company called doramad and they had doramad's radium toothpaste mm. i'm gonna read you their ad. i don't <laughs> mind you i'm gonna rem just remind you of this real quick <laughs> we don't know how dangerous radioactivity is i know <laughs> we should do a, we should do a commercial for this what does doramad do through its radioactivity, it increases the defensives of teeth and gums. The cells are charged with a new vigorous life energy, which inhibits bacteria in their destructive ability. Hence the exquisite prevention and healing effect on gum diseases. It polishes your enamel to the softest, shiniest white, prevents tartar, and has good foam, new taste, pleasant, mild, and refreshing. Use extensively. I'm really disappointed that you didn't read it to me like a commercial ad, but I'm not I'm not a marketer. That's the closest I can get to a commercial. The lies you tell. We did a commercial ad for TikTok. <sighs> yeah, but how many takes did that take? <laughs> um, that was a really bad commercial ad anyway. Eh, it was halfway decent at best. No, this one. No, ours was great. This what you just read me was horrible. Oh, yeah. I just love how it ends with. <laughs> Use extensively. Yeah, right. And starts with through its radioactivity. Oh my God. It's it is really funny. Like you have to remind yourself, like you said, that they didn't know that it was bad. Just completely blind. Because if you just if you don't remind yourself, you're just like, what the hell? Uh and like these are like, you know, early 1900s like print ads too. Right. So they're all hilarious looking. Oh, I bet. Oh my god. Our next product, are you ready? Yeah. Cosmetics. Oh, of course. Added to all sorts of women's cosmetics to help rejuvenate and brighten the skin. This is absolutely horrifying. A French company claimed, again, we don't know the danger of radioactivity, that the radioactive compounds contain energy that would firm muscle tissue, reduce fat, and smooth out your wrinkles. 
It's collagen, baby. Not radium. Just wait 30 years and we find out what collagen really does. Yeah, right. Okay, we're going to get into my favorite now is the health products. This is very, very stressful. Do you know, do you have a statistic on how many people have died from all this? I don't. Because it's probably too much. But it's it's not a low number. And the thing is, is it took How many years 30 was this years. Rage, like a raging product? I will tell you after we get through the products. Okay. Uh, but too long. So since we know that it was supposed to be curative, right? It was used in bandages. <laughs> so, you know, help your cuts heal Oh real my fast. God, we're just like putting it on open wounds. Heating pads. <laughs> actual pads. Oh my... <gasps> no! And even suppositories. Your vagina's gonna fall off. Suppositories too, bro. <laughs> you could put the radium right up your butt to just fix all your life problems. Oh my God, people's buttholes were just falling out. So there was a company in Colorado that specifically focused on men's impotence, and they had Vita Radium suppositories. Are you ready for their ad? No, I can't take this. If you're showing signs of slowing up in your actions and duties. Oh my God. <laughs> slowing up. Perhaps long before you should. Slowing up. If you've begun to lose your charm, your personality, your normal manly vigor, certainly you want to stage a comeback. Oh my god. If that doesn't solve your penis problems, you could go one step further and buy a bougie, which was a wax rod with radium in it that you just put right into your, your urethra. No. No, we don't do that. Mm-mm. Okay, well, if that's too much for you, then you could have bought the Radio Indoctrinator Jockstrap. What? Or as they call them in the day, the athletic supporter. What is happening right now? And just wear that at night to make sure that your penis still works. <laughs> I, I don't have any more words. The guy who invented... Did his dick fall the, off? ...these products? No, but he did die of bladder cancer. <laughs> Like, you don't want to laugh at that, but it's like... Oh, my God. You put radioactive rods in your shaft. Oh, Lord. <laughs> oh, my God. Don't worry. They had plenty of health products for the women, too, where you could just go to the radium spa. Oh, my God. You could soak in the radium water or take a radium mud bath to leave your skin soft and glowing. And then you would finish that up with an application of radium cream. To make the effects last even longer. This is so beyond messed up. It's insane. Like this it's would like this would be a time where you would be like very thankful that you were poor and couldn't afford these things. Like you at that time you'd be like, oh my god, I'm so sad I can't get all these things because it's expensive. And then after you're like, I'm so glad I was a broke bitch. That's really, really funny. Because my next line is, if all of those products are just too expensive for you or too hard to incorporate into your everyday life. Oh no. For the normal person, you could just buy <laughs> radium brand butter. No. And you could get all the health benefits by putting radium butter into all of your favorite no. things. No! Oh, yeah. Look up. Seriously, look up the radium products and look up their packaging and their ads because it, like, it seems so surreal that everything is just like radium butter, radium water. Oh, my God. This is it's okay. I'm not, I mean, I know we're laughing, and I'm sure people listening understand that we laugh and we're uncomfortable, and it's really not funny. This is actually like so freaking horrifying and sad. And these are just a few of the problems. Oh, right. For sure. It's in everything, clearly. Or was. There's also cigarettes, condoms, <laughs> hand cleaner, lipstick, and so much more. Like, how many dicks fell off? It, I want that I, statistic. It has to be just. <laughs> I want that statistic. There has to be, like, from 1900 to 1930, a wide range of guys just losing their... I'm going to try to Google it really quick. Continue on. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That all, right, we, we discovered it in 1898, and these products were pumped out into the market until... Well, it started to turn in 1925 when a pathologist developed a test that proved radium had poisoned the watch painters, the radium girls we were talking earlier. So that was kind of the first turning point when we realized this might not be the best thing ever, and it's actually destroying people from the inside. So while the company still tried to, you know, save face and make money and say that, you know, this is great products, those lawsuits that started with the watch girls began to make the public aware of all the, mm. the dangers of radium. It doesn't put an end to all the products, though. It wasn't really until like the 1940s, 1950s, and that's when they started to reduce the use of radium in like 
most of its applications, a lot due to the high price, the small quantity um, of radium being produced, and people are now realizing like the dangers of handling it. I, I can't find a statistic, statistic on people losing their dicks from this, but I'm going to keep searching and I'll, I'll follow up. Fair. Okay. Fair enough. To answer your question from earlier, though, it was removed from like the last over-the-counter or just readily available product in 1970. Wait, when did we start? 19, 1898. We started knowing it was dangerous in 1925. Okay. It wasn't really removed from most products until the 40s or 50s, but you could still find it in things until 1970. Holy crap. Kind of like what you were talking about earlier, though, is like these companies, they knew. Mm. Oh, absolutely. They knew well before it went public of the health dangers. But they're raking in cash from these sales, right? Right. Like the people that work there and like higher ups would be like have gloves on and have like hazmat suits or wouldn't be in the rooms. It's like, why? But everything's fine. Yeah. Yeah. They're not the ones handling the product. You know, they're the ones just raking in tons of cash, which like it leads me to think, though, you can't tell me that all this stuff isn't happening now with all the large corporations that still have a hold over our regulatory systems and government. It is. There's tons of stuff we're ingesting that has to be, I mean, hopefully not as dangerous as radioactive elements being put into butter, but <laughs> you know the things that we use every day are still killing us. Like we're still producing cigarettes, even though, hello? <laughs> At least though, like cigarettes are a product now where it's like they're marketed as well, dangerous. Well, yeah, but... But like how many other things right. are not? Just read the back of any of your bathroom products. Yeah. Or even a bag of chips for that matter. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's it's crazy. It's just it's, insane. Yeah, but you know, we're still gonna eat McDonald's. <sighs> you mostly. Oh my god, I ate your fr- I ate some of your fries. You you ate ham. Okay, because of I don't fries. Don't say some of. Okay, them. well that's fine. You were dipping six in ketchup because I haven't had McDonald's and especially their fries <laughs> in months, 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 and you brought them into my house. It does hit just right. The though. smell. <laughs> The aroma. Oh my gosh. They they know what they're okay, doing. Okay, anyway. The radium fries. Oh, Jesus Christ. Probably. <laughs> they do say that they put crack in their Coke. How do you think like their fries are so glowingly golden? Radium. Radium. But yeah, so that's I was gonna go really in depth into the radium girls, like I said, but then I got so distracted. No, that's no, I like that because I do know quite a bit about the Radium Girls and I, I still will listen to it again because it's very interesting. It's sad and it's just a really heartbreaking story. But like you said, they were complete badasses, those women. But it, it's I didn't. It is so sad, but like a couple of them, they knew they were dying. They could have given up the fight, but it was just like, yep. we're going to take these these companies down to our last Yeah, and they did. I mean, some of them didn't even get to cash their nope, settlement they checks. didn't. Yeah, that's really sad. But um, no, that's really good. Like, I guess I didn't realize all of the products that that was in. Because um, I, I feel like whenever you hear about it, you always hear about theirs. And you're like, oh, yeah, well, no, duh, it was killing them. They were putting it in their mouth. Where this one was, it was just supposed to be a watch. Where all these other companies are like, slather your body. Right. And I guess when you think of them or if you've listened to them or whatever, you don't you don't realize that it's in all these other products. So the girls were kind of just like, it's fine. Like, what do you you know what I mean? Because it's literally in all these other products. And I know that they were kind of before that, too. But still, that's crazy. Now, they were probably getting like the most concentrated amounts. Right. right? Because it was a powder for them and enough. Yeah. So they were inhaling it in their nose and stuff, too. Just from powder in their under their nails. I think it was one of the things, too. Like, oh, God, those poor girls. Like all these other products that we were talking about, they other than some of the toys, right? There wasn't enough to really make that green glow. Mm -hmm. So it was much smaller doses so all these other people who died it was just a build-up over years and years so when the ailments actually came out it was so much harder to correlate yeah that's true that it was because of this it wasn't until years later where they're like like the uh the guy who made the athletic supporters yeah he died of bladder cancer but how long do you think it took before they put two and two together Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah, that's just really wild. But it is really sad because, yeah, all the companies that had it, they knew. But there wasn't any laws to make them stop their no. marketing as or lying as their market. How do I want? You know what I mean? I mean, even after the laws started to come out, it took another 25 years for it to co- start well, yeah. really being taken out of products, too. Yikes, 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 yikes. Makes me feel uncomfy. I just want to know, like, the oddity shop 
esque podcasters fifty years from now who are going to be like, oh, yeah. talking about the products we use, and they're like, I can't believe these idiots would touch that. <sighs> we just have no idea. The, no, you're you're true. I think we have a better idea than they did then. But yeah, you're right. There's still so much stuff that we still do don't know about. Ugh, ugh, yuck. Uh, great job. Thank you, thank you. I did my best. I, we we stumbled over some sentences with the uh the fever going on here, but hopefully I got the points. You across. don't sound that bad. Ugh, not as half as bad as I feel. Well, that's good. I mean, I'd rather you feel worse than. Sound. <laughs> I know, I know what you mean. <laughs> uh well anyway uh yeah holy crap thanks for listening um we really appreciate y'all coming back if you are finding yourself coming back over and over again please like subscribe follow us on instagram twitter tell us about the radium products that your grandparents used we're still looking for one more story for our first bonus episode on your own written in yeah we have a couple thank you um if your grandfather's penis fell out oh yeah because, you know he was using the suppositories or we if somebody know. can just find that statistic for me i'd really appreciate that because <laughs> i i gotta know um but yeah uh most importantly creep it really oddballs goodbye Bye.